Hello, I am Jin Oo from Reader to Share, and in today's video, we are going to start discussing about Unit 3. Now, um, in my personal opinion, I believe that Unit 3 is um, differentiated from Unit 1 until there is a very complex unit to, dis um, to learn about. Um, you have to uh, deeply understand the concepts, so uh, my videos are now going to change a little. Um, I used to talk about two small chapters in a video, but now I'm going to discuss each one in a video. So and we can just um, understand the concepts better. Let's move on. The this chapter we talk about today is the production function. So what is the production function? Um, it is basically the relationship between inputs and outputs. Um, I'm sure we all know what functions are. So like simply like we just discussing about um, how much quantity of inputs will lead to how much quantity of outputs, for example, like um, if I have 10 workers, um, a certain amount of capital, a certain amount of, of land, and then I, I'm trying to some, make some teeth, uh, make some uh, ice cream, and then how much ice cream will I be able to produce or something like this. So basically this production function is something very essential for firms because it shows how much you have to input to gain a certain amount of output. And another concept very important is costs and revenues. Costs are basically all the money that you have to give or implicit cost, explicit cost, we are going to talk about a little later. So like simply you can just think what you have to give up for producing. Well, revenues are what you gain for producing. So like um, if you sell um, 12 ice creams or $10, no matter how much it costs for you to produce it, the revenue will be 120. Cost and revenues aren't just something we talked about in this video, but it is going to be important throughout our couple of few AP microeconomics videos. So moving on, let's talk about the concept of product. So product is actually uh, a similar expression to quantity, how much produce, how much can we produce? And there are three types of products. The first one is total product, which basically is the sum of all the, pro uh, all the products that we can produce uh, with a certain amount of input. So for example, um, let's say that we can produce two ice creams with one input and three ice creams with two inputs. Uh, the total product of one input will be two ice creams, while the total product of two inputs will be three ice creams. The marginal product is a little different. It is very similar to the marginal revenue or whatever we talked about before. It is describing how much product you gain additionally by adding one unit of input. Uh, let's go back to the ice cream case. At one, you get two ice cream. At two units of labor or uh, input or whatever, you get three ice cream. In this case, the marginal product will be one ice cream. The third concept is average product, which is basically total product divided by input. We usually um, describe input as the same as labor, so labor can also fit in. So the average product of one unit of input is going to be two, while the average product of two inputs is going to be three over two in the ice cream case that we talked about before. Um, and here is an interesting law which talks about returns, the law of diminishing marginal returns. And in this talking that after some level marginal return or marginal product is going to diminish, which means it's going to decrease. But why is it? So we have to um, just think about it logically. Um, let's say you used to have one worker, but now you have three workers. Now it is certainly, um, it might be different from what kind of firm you are operating, but usually it is going to benefit you because now the workers can specialize on what they do. For example, if you are producing um, ice cream cones, one can produce cones, one can produce ice creams, one can produce toppings or whatever. Now, this type of specialization uh, makes the workers able to specialize on what they are good at and now they can produce efficiently, which means the marginal return or the marginal product is going to increase. Um, on the other hand, let's say that you decided to hire um, like a, a 10 million more workers in a small ice cream cone factory. And that isn't certainly going to be beneficial since 
Now people are crowded all over the factory. They can't even just uh, move around. They can't just produce. And while some workers are going to produce and specialize, the others are, aren't going to work. They are just going to basically um, chat with your friends next to them or whatever. So this type of <clears throat> increase in input will not lead to an increase in marginal return. It'll lead to a decrease in marginal return. So this is basically what the law of diminishing marginal return is just talking about. After some level, the marginal return that you get is going to decrease because now the workers cannot work efficiently as they used to before. And specialization is not going to um, give you an edge over. Now putting it all together, these concepts. So we have talked about products, returns, inputs, outputs, and more. You, what you see here is the graph of three types of products, total product, average product, and marginal product. Now, the marginal product after a certain point, it diminishes. So this is showing the marginal, uh, the law of diminishing marginal return. What was it? Sorry. Is the law of diminishing marginal return. And there is an interesting relationship between marginal product and total product. What you see is that um, as the marginal product increases, the total product increases at an increasing rate. So from here, so basically from here to here, the total product is increasing at an increasing rate. This um, this text is kind of too big, I guess. I won't be able to put it anyways. Now, the marginal product then decreases, but until a certain point, it is still a positive number until here. In this case, the total product is going to increase at a decreasing rate, which means that it still increases, but not as much as they used to before. And you can um, clearly see at this graph the increasing rate gets smaller and smaller. Now, finally, as the marginal product um, breaks through the x axis and becomes a negative number, you can see that the total product is also declining at this amount, which corresponds to this one. It's basically the similar with. <clears throat> average product, um, as long as the marginal product is increasing, the average product will increase. But if it decreases, the average product will have to decrease. So it's basically simple. Since average product is nothing more than total product divided by quantity of input. What's truly important is you have to um, split through this graph, see uh, where the marginal product starts to decrease. <clears throat> you have to understand the relationship between the marginal product and total product. And most important, you have to re remember all concepts so that you don't forget. <clears throat> um, what we learned today is a very important part of AP microeconomics. We are going to use this. We are going to talk about this, analyze this throughout other videos and other concepts. So I hope that you all understand it. Um, <clears throat> thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to our channel, and feel free to comment about questions you have, maybe some interesting um, opinions that you can give about my videos so that I can improve them or whatever. Anyways, thank you for watching. We will come back after two weeks.